Hey everyone, how's it going today? Hi everyone. So, welcome to the first uh, hashtag I made this show, uh, which is obviously a play off of some uh, some channels in our uh, Slack community. I hope everyone's doing great today. I'm Brian. I'm a DevRel here at Sanity, and I'm Cap, um, also DevRel at Sanity. Awesome. So we're going to take this opportunity uh, to hopefully showcase a lot of great community contributions that are happening. Uh, they're happening both in that Slack community that I mentioned, but also uh, in a cool kind of website that is a piece of the Sanity.io website called uh, Sanity.io slash community. Uh, and so we're going to be showcasing some cool projects, cool contributions that are happening there. Uh, if you have not already, do go join that community. You can sign up. You can put your projects in there, your kind of showcases of how you're using Sanity. You can put in there uh, guides. You can write little guides around stuff. You can add in uh, plugins, you can add in starters, all these things that get promoted to the entire Sanity community. So I think it's a, a super cool project. I've got a few of my things shared over there. So I'm really excited to share more uh, with that community as a whole. Today, though, we have a, uh, a special guest. Uh, he's been very, very um, prolific in the past few weeks at creating some plugins uh, around the Snipcart Sanity ecosystem. Uh, so his name is Jacob Stordahl. Uh, he's a Jamstack and serverless dev, and he's one of the founders of Black Cat Studio in St. Paul, Minnesota. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him on, and we're going to have a chat about all the different things he's doing in our awesome community. Hey, Jacob, how's it going today? Hi, Jacob. Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. So I guess let's 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 get an introduction. Who are you? Uh, what do you do at Black Cat? Uh, what have you? What's kind of your history with uh, web development? Yeah, so I'm currently just working freelance. Uh, Black Cat is a little sole proprietorship I run with my partner Milo, who's an illustrator. Um, so we mainly focus on um, building websites and and um, more branding, marketing materials for small businesses. Um, trying to provide things that are really high quality um, but still affordable to compete with things like um, Squarespace and Wix, like providing them things that are um, professionally made but still affordable for small business owners. Um, so yeah, we started doing that about a year ago and it's been really fun um, getting to work together. Um, I started learning web development in, let's see, I was in college in it must have been 2015. I took my first web design class. I learned HTML and CSS. CSS3 had just come out and um, learned all about Bootstrap and all that stuff. Um, I tried to learn JavaScript in college and I uh, failed at it. I didn't didn't get it at all. Um, and so I chose to leave development for a little bit. I uh, didn't really consider it for a career path um, and chose to do welding instead, which is really weird. Uh, the story to that is kind That's of awesome. interesting. We can get into that if we want to. Um, but what I found was what I really liked was problem solving. And through working in a fabrication shop, I got really, really good at solving complex problems. And so then uh, about a year and a half ago, I came back to JavaScript. And because I had done all that problem solving, it just clicked. Um, and so I've been trying to do that ever since. So what what kind of problem solving with with fabrication? What what's what problems are there in that in that way? So um, I got my first real big job um, where I was building stuff kind of on my own uh, in a sign shop. And so in lots of fabrication, it's kind of all metal, and so it's kind of all the same. But a sign has so many moving parts and so many different things going on that you have to consider. Um, and so those problems just became. Yeah, and the, the, the shop I worked in was really ambitious. It's like the biggest, uh, most lo longest running sign shop in Seattle called Western Neon. And um, they had tons of great people there. I learned a lot and we built some really, really cool stuff. Um, so that, you know, giving the designers range to produce really cool things that we could build, um, then it was just up to us to figure out how to do it. And it was kind of like, like a game every day. We get to come in and team up and try to solve this problem. It seems impossible. As I, I like what you said about like uh, um, does that, have the designers uh, design something that we could make. That sounds very familiar in the web dev community as well. Yeah, 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 totally. And I, I love the the name Black Cat. I'm a cat fan, so Thanks. huge fan. Yeah, of my, we have a we have a little cat named Piglet, and she's she's black, so she's our little oh. logo on the website. If you go there. My black has that. upstairs barred from the recording right now because she would come down here and scream <laughs> at us all. So it's probably a, a good thing. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. mine does that as well, yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, so you've been doing 
web dev professionally for like a, a year or so now, but obviously with a with a history in the past. Uh, how did you discover Sanity? I think from your community profile, it said that you discovered it in in June of last year, right? Um, yeah. So I was I had been contracting. I still contract with them, but um, I was living out in a small town in Washington called Port Townsend, working for this company called Bootstrap Commercial Arts. Um, they are a couple, uh, just like me and Milo are, and so we kind of clicked. Uh, they hired us. Um, as contractors, um, me able to do design and illustration, me to do uh, web dev and some video stuff. And we had been working with WordPress. Um, they didn't really have tons of experience with JavaScript. Uh, the owner, Rick, really is good at HTML and CSS. And so he was comfortable building WordPress themes and kind of leaning on that ecosystem to bring mm -hmm. the functionality into the websites. Um, and so I was doing that for a while and it was just miserable. Um, obviously, you know, dealing with not so much WordPress itself, um, but trying to get in contact with developers to talk about their plug, try to do this, how can you help me with that? Like that whole uh, process was just really uh, difficult, especially as a contractor who's not getting paid a salary. Like my time is very valuable. So I wanna just be able to do it really fast and get it to them, but still have it be high quality. And so I started learning about headless CMS. I was like, oh, that sounds really cool. You separate the data. You don't have to provision the database. You don't have to store a database or have a server at all. It's like, that sounds great. I don't want to sit on the phone with Bluehost anymore than I was at the time. So um, I started playing with it um, personally, built a couple um, example sites using it with uh, Svelte and Sapper, because that's the framework I learned. Um, so yeah, I just found it, started playing with it, and fell in love. Isn't it? Nice. Well, so, one of my one of my favorite projects that you shared on your profile in the community, it's a fictitious plant shop, and I love plants. And so it's like the most beautiful website, but um, it's under his profile, and uh, it's titled Grow with lots of Ws, but it's a very fun uh, test site. I liked it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun building that. Um, really what fun. was the inspiration for that being a plant, a, a, a site selling plants? I just um, hadn't really done any like e-commerce work yet. And so I, I just thought, how could I use the CMS uh, for like um, a business that wants to communicate inventory to clients, um, but doesn't necessarily use the website as a point of sale? And so my idea was if I owned a plant shop, I would want people to know what plants I have at the time. And if I run out of them, I can take them off the website. And so mm -hmm. I thought, you know, throwing in a Boolean insanity in, in the schema, it just, you know, it's that easy. So I just wanted to get that idea. And I just, I like plants. I liked finding all the pictures of all the plants on, on Splash. Um, and yeah, also where my education is really in, uh, uh, in, in, in my schooling and college, that's what I learned. So I really liked designing that as well. I just thought the visual was sort of nice. That's amazing. Nice. So, so how how are you and how is Black Cat using uh, using Sanity right now? What's what's kind of that process like? Um, I kind of use it for everything. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the clients I work with, they don't really need things like authentication or user accounts or anything like that. They just want someone to be able to manage their content, and I don't want to open up a WordPress site. And so that's kind of where those those things meet. It's like I want to be able to write only JavaScript all the time, and they want to be able to easily manage their content. Um, and that's another big reason I like Sanity is because I can customize that to basically do anything I need it to to fit their needs, whether it's you know defining pages for a whole website where they can you know. Uh, manage every single block in each page or, or whether it's just like in the plant store uh, types of plants, that sort of thing. Um, it's just super, super flexible. And so I think that it's, um, and also intuitive for people to use, like people, clients I have, they, they use it and they're like, you know, I'm used to WordPress, but this actually makes makes sense um, to me, even though it's new, which which I thought was, was really interesting. I, I tried a, a couple other headless CMSs and there, a lot of them, there's just so much. And so a lot of clients, business owners, they, they just are like, I, I don't want to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So, kind of strikes that nice balance between simple and flexible. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. 
All right, so let's let's talk. You've you've been doing a lot of uh, of sharing in the community recently, which I'm I'm personally digging quite a bit. Um, but specifically, you've been doing some plugins for for Snipcart for e-commerce, and I'd be curious to find out more about that. Yeah, so I would say when was that? Like October, um, September, October of this last fall. Um, I was still the only way I could really do e-commerce was WooCommerce with WordPress. That was the only thing I was really using for e-commerce um, because I could still customize things well enough, you know, just make a trial theme uh, and, and go from there. Um, but I, I wanted something that could be completely headless. And um, then I, I found out about Snipcart. And so I, I found this starter that someone had made. Um, she's credited in the README for the, the Gatsby Sanity project. And um, it it used Snipcart and it was a Gatsby starter. It was kind of the base Gatsby starter that you get. Um, and then it just had, uh, it was pulling in product data from Markdown files in the front matter of Markdown. And I was like, okay, well, Snipcart seems really nice. It's, it's really easy to use. Um, it, you know, it, it seems secure and really simple to set up. Uh, but who's going to want, who of my clients is going to want to write Markdown? Half of them, most of them, probably all of them don't even know what Markdown is. So um, I was like, well, there's a Gatsby plugin for Sanity. So why don't I try to make my own starter that uses that as a data source instead? Um, and so that's where I started. I made that first version of the, gets me Snipcart Sanity uh, starter um, and just kind of worked on fleshing out features in that for a couple months until about two weeks ago. Um, and it got to a point where I realized that the way I had it set up wasn't really that great as like a template, sort of like a, like a toolkit that you could use to build headless e-commerce. And I thought that's kind of really what I want. In my ideal world, I'd have all these different parts that can be configured in different ways for different situations, but they all just work together uh, in any configuration. And so that's when I came up with this idea for this, I'm calling it Steel. It's a pseudo framework for e-commerce, headless e-commerce. So it's sort of just this tool set of things that are sort of pre-made that you can plug, plug into each other and use. And so uh, the first part is just a pre-configured studio um, that has a, the, the default e-commerce um, schema applied. Um, that is pr pretty much done. I want to do some more tests on it, but it is live on the one click the create page. Um, I don't know if it's on the page, but um, I'll try to get the URL um, so people can use that. I, I just built my own personal site. I rebuilt it with this system to test it out and I'm liking it so far. Nice. Um, the, the, the next one is all the plugins. So I wanted to have um, a suite of plugins that sort of bring the Snipcart API into the dashboard so that whoever is monitoring and managing the content can see, uh, you know, whatever kind of data they might want to monitor um, from this, from the CMS. Um, and so the first one of those is the, the Snipcart orders plugin, which just um, displays your uh, most recent orders in the dashboard um, pretty simply. And so, that, that's kind of where the idea started. Um, and then on top of that, uh, what I'm working on now, in addition to more plugins is creating a, like an ecosystem of starter templates for a bunch of different frameworks. So that no matter what framework you use, you can use the system, have the backend connect, have the plugins and it'll just work. Um, so yeah, I've refactored the Gatsby project now into, into the Gatsby starter. And then I'm gonna be starting on uh, hopefully a sapper version soon. Um, I'm hoping someone in the community will want to help with the next JS starter because I have never worked with next. Uh, that'd be really cool. Um, and then some of the, I uh, hope some of the guys at Snipcart will want to contribute some view front ends because um, that's all they, what they all work in. So um, yeah, so that's, that's what the story is behind the plugins and the whole motivation behind them. Awesome. So, uh, so why don't you give us a tour? Let me uh, let me put you uh, put your screen yeah. up, and you can kind of show show off what you were just talking about. Yeah. Okay. So this is yeah, this is the studio I've made for for my personal site. Um, it, it looks a little different than the studio will when you uh, use the create page to spin it up. Um, but if we go over to dashboard, um, here is the orders. Um, so it's pretty simple. It just shows, you know, the person's avatar. This is just a test Snipcart account that I have set up. 
with some fake orders. Um, so this is, this indicates that the status that has been processed, the order, uh, like the payment has been processed through the payment gateway. Um, and then, yeah, just give some cursory uh, info. And then if you click, it will actually take you, you can see in the bottom corner, it'll take you to the order within your Snapcart dashboard. So if you're already logged in, it'll just take you right there. You can do the invoice, uh, do anything like mark it as shipped or something like that, whatever you need. Um, so yeah, the, the only other plugin I have that's finished is uh, Best Sellers, um, which is basically the same code base. It's just basically a different query and a little bit cha of changes to the template. Um, but yeah, and then I you know, have the little refresh button. So if you're getting more orders than I am, you can update those rather easily. The organization um, yeah, of all this, is, the organization of all this is very uh, pleasing. Just like being able to see all of your orders in one section and then like the best sellers. This is phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, I really like it. And it was so really easy. You... Uh, the, the CSS that is provided by Sanity was really, really helpful. Um, like all these predefined variables for like the line width and, and all that sort of stuff, like the buttons. You know, I didn't have to do any of that. That was really, really nice. Nice. Did so, you... uh, go ahead, Cap. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to ask uh, if, if you could kind of give us a, a peek behind the scenes of the, the actual like code and how the plugin works yeah. in, in that regard. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> well, there's my API key. I'm going to have to delete that now. Let's oh, no. Actually, let's just go to Who the amongst GitHub. us hasn't done that live, right? It's just, it's, it's just a test journal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, here's the project. Um, it's really pretty simple. It's just one index um so yeah it's just a you know class component with some prop types um this is the main function it just um creates a request it provides the api key through a header um the only other option besides the api key is the limit so it defaults to five orders but you can in the in the options um here you can change that um, in, in the dashboard config file in, in the studio. Um, yeah, and then it just uh, sets those orders and puts it in the state, and then we parse it out into um, this template right here. Um, so a lot of this was um, actually spun up from, I've been using the, the cats um, sample plugin with when you run, uh, what is it, Sanity init plugin, I think. Um, mm -hmm. The default dashboard plugin is uh, it like gets uh, cat pictures randomly. So <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, it's making the API call. I could just use that. So um, a lot of this is boilerplate from, from that. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. Just, you know, just uh, mapping over each order that's returned and, and printing out one of these uh, little divs with all the data inside. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And do you and find the, that uh, best sellers plugin is the same uh, code base basically? No worries. Do you find that a lot of your customers um, have you used this in customer like websites yet, or in their studios? No, no, I'm still trying to mm -hmm. trying to test test it. That's why I'm rebuilding my site in it. Um, I'm going to have some digital products and hopefully sell some stickers as well, um, just because I really want to know. Uh, what their experience is going to be like so I can mm -hmm. foresee any uh, potential problems and that sort of stuff. Nice. I wonder what the uh, limit is. I wonder how high you could get that before it doesn't know. Oh, I don't know. I think you can query all of your orders, I think. I mean, it might be a little slow to load, but... Mm -hmm. So what, what would you say is kind of the, uh, the advantage to going with a, with a snip cart type uh, e-commerce system as opposed to like a Shopify or you mentioned you know, WooCommerce from before, obviously that's, that's tightly coupled with, uh, with WordPress, but yeah. uh, what would that kind of, why snip cart and not something else? Yeah, I, I talked with um, Frank over at snip cart yesterday about this and I think that it really depends on the situation. Um, for example, like my, my mom and sister are just starting a boutique with a storefront. Um, and so me and, and Mila at Black Hat, we did all the branding and we're doing the website. Um, and so because they needed a storefront, 
it was kind of just easier to go with Shopify because they just provide that out of the box. And they also, um, we, you know, my, my mom and sister obviously don't have a ton of money to pay me to build a custom website. And so just spinning up a Shopify theme and, and customizing it a little bit is, is about all we could do. So I think in those situations, it's fine, uh, Shopify, but there are lots of cases where I'm already running into issues. Um, for example, the boutique is uh, hosting vendors, kind of like consignment. Um, they're like featuring local makers. And so they get to have their stuff in the store, in the little section, the store gets 20%. Um, but on the website, I wanted to be able to feature them. And if I wanted to do that inside a Shopify theme, I would have to go in, make a vendor's page that has a grid with all their photos that links to an individual page for each of them that I would have to create. And so what I, what, what I would like to do is create a Sandy studio that has a vendor schema that I've made and say, hey, Shopify, for every vendor in this database, make a page. And there really isn't an easy way to do that. And so I think when you get into the more those more custom things where you don't just want uh, an e-commerce store with a shop grid and categories and single product pages, um, so going with something like Snipcart, especially as a developer, is, is way easier because I can build exactly the website I want and just throw the e-commerce in and it just works. Um, yeah, that, that's why I really like Snipcart and think it pairs really well with things like Sanity if you're already building a website like that. Do you, nice. you have any ideas for future plugins? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm working on a couple. Um, I'm working on one similar to this for subscriptions. Um, and then oh. the other one that I have um, in the works is for discounts. And this one's going to be a little bit different because it's going to involve pushing to the database as well. Um, so it will show you what discounts you have and how many times they've been used. I thought that mm. that data would probably be uh, relevant. You know, if, if someone's using a, a coupon a lot, maybe you want to push it on social or, or something like that. Um, and I also wanted people to be able to make new uh, discount codes uh, straight from the studio. And so that's, the, that's the, the harder part that I'm trying to work through right now is there's going to be a little button up here uh, that you can click. It will open a big modal over the studio with a form. Uh, you can select the type of discount, enter in the data, hit submit, and it will push it to Snipcart, create the coupon code for you, and then you can use that in your storefront. That, um, that flex mode is really nice to just be able to let them create their own discount codes. That's phenomenal. Yeah, totally. And it's not like, like the Snipcart dashboard is great. I, I love it. It's really intuitive mm -hmm. and easy to use. But just like that context switching, you know, if, if they're already in the studio, I want to be able to let them manage that stuff and see that type of data um, from, from the get-go right there. So out of curiosity, so you, you've you been sharing this stuff in the community, you've been building it, it's all stuff that you can install, like right now somebody could go and install this into their uh, sanity project. Yep. What was the impetus behind sharing this stuff? Why, why did you put it into sanity.io slash community? Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I just am, I'm really into the idea of open source. Um, I have basically learned everything I know now because of the open source community and because of, um, you know, content creators making content on online. Um, I haven't bought any books. I have bought one course um, the whole time I've been learning. Um, and, and so I just, I feel like if, I really don't get people who, who want to make stuff. I mean, I, I get the idea of, of profiting off of your work and that's totally reasonable, but I just feel, especially as only being a developer for a year writing JavaScript, everything I'm working on could be so much better if I had second eyes um, and help and kind of contributions from people and feedback. Um, and so that's why I really like learning out in the open, as people say. Um, I think it, it helps me a lot. Um, and yeah, I just think that that's, I mean, that's the internet I grew up on is, um, you know, open, you know, sharing with people, that sort of thing. Um, and so that's really the, the web I, I want to see in the future. So I think it's important to contribute in those ways. Awesome. So if somebody were looking to, to get started and, uh, and build their own uh, plugin, 
um, how would you recommend they go they go about that as as a as kind of a self taught person yourself? Like, what what's the the entry point? How are they going to be able to do that? Yeah, I think I started just um, build a plugin locally in the studio first, kind of get how that whole whole thing works, um, installing the dashboard in the first place and getting it configured, and then um, just run Sanity in it plugin and build build something in there. Um, and then, I mean, if you want it to be uh, available through NPM, which I really prefer, is uh, I, I use Sandy Pack, which Espen just um, just polished off, and it, I really loved using it. Um, the little tool he built for um, building plugins, it was um, made it super easy. There was a a couple things that were uh, there, there was one bug I ran into, but then by the next morning he had submitted a um, pull request that fixed the bug. So yeah, it's been it's been really nice having that that tool. So uh, out of curiosity, um, what is the, the very next thing that you plan on, on releasing with all this? Because you, you've been talking about, like, I've got, I've got plans for the discount codes. I've got plans for this. Like, what, what's, what's your big focus right now? Um, honestly, over the weekend, I was focused on rebuilding my personal site. Um, but now I'm going to be focusing on, I'm going to take, like, a kind of bird's eye view of the whole ecosystem, where it's at. Um, there's a there's actually a repository for steel as a you know as a, a framework where it's just a readme with links to uh, all all the the different um, parts of the system uh, including the um, the studio um, I can pull that up if people want to see yeah, that um, so yeah I'm really just going to be taking taking a look at this and um, keep going I mean if yeah if people have any feedback. Um, anything they'd like to see or contributions they'd like to make. Um, any of the repositories for any of this stuff is, uh, is a great place to do that. Um, I think the biggest thing is, is the, the front end. Um, right now it's only the Gatsby front end. Um, so getting, getting some more, some more front ends uh, as part of the system would be, would be great. Nice. And you'll, uh, you, you can uh, share this in the, in the Sandy Slack and in the Sandy community, right? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. We have, um, so, so yeah, um, I think this is all absolutely amazing, and I, I'm so grateful that you have you have taken the opportunity to to promote this and give it back to the to the community as a whole. I think that's that's absolutely uh, amazing, and I appreciate you doing all of that. Absolutely. Yeah, and Pleasure. if you do want to find Jacob, definitely head over. We put the link in the in the chat, but uh, the profile has your looks like your personal site and mm -hmm. your email and all your other social links. So all in one yeah. spot. And if you do, if you do have all that other stuff uh, next and view and all that and, and want to help out with the steel project, it sounds like, sounds like a lot of people would be very uh, excited to see kind of a flexible front end and back end for their e-commerce too. So we Absolutely. have a, yeah, I'd love to see that. We have a question in the chat. Where do the name steel come from? I don't know. I have this weird. I'm really into metal. Um, I would say as a welder too, <laughs> um, but metal metal music. And so I, I just I was like, I want to rebrand this this template a little bit. And I found this GIF of uh, Beavis and Butthead like head banging to metal music. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know why, but I just loved that. So I just threw that in the readme for a while. And I was like, well, what kind of names could I come up with that are sort of around that theme? And um, yeah, I just landed on steel. I think it's very interesting that that the uh, kind of the the web that you were talking about, like wanting to make sure it continued this kind of open sharing web, is also like a very like ideal of the '90s kind of thought process. And it's like yeah. the the name involves Beavis and Butthead too, which is <laughs> about as yeah. '90s as it gets. I think absolutely, yeah. Cool. So, uh, so if you wanted to give a, a shout out of some sort of like, what, what, where can people find you? How can they find out more about all the things they're doing? Except for, you know, sanity.io slash community. He's on there, but uh, where mm -hmm. else can people yeah. find you on the internet? Yeah. Um, really just Twitter. Um, I, I'm kind of on Instagram. I, I used Instagram like the first week it came out in like 2009. Um, but I, I'm kind of off it now. I'm, you know, averse to Facebook a little bit. So Fair currently enough. on Twitter, um, I'm okay with Jack Dorsey as for now. We'll see. But 
yeah, Twitter is great. And then um, I'm always blogging on my website um, and elsewhere uh, sometimes. Um, yeah, I love, love writing about stuff I'm learning and helping people learn about front end development. Awesome. Right well, Jacob, thanks for being on. And I, I want everyone who's currently watching to know that we are going to do an after show for this. All of this content is going to be available on YouTube. So if you missed the first part of this, you'll be able to catch back up and watch it on YouTube later. But uh, we are going to have uh, a special uh, quiet time after this for, for people who are live. We're also going to be doing a couple raffles um, for active contributors in the sanity.io slash community site, uh, as well as people who are active in currently Twitch chat is the only one I can do this for. So if you want some swag, like perhaps a an awesome Sanity t-shirt, uh, make sure you're on Twitch or make sure that you have a contribution in on... Uh, on sanity.io slash community. And before we get going, I do want to make sure that we talk about the fact that not only do we have the, all the initiatives on the community site, but Kat, there's a there's an authorship program that we're working on as well, right? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, and Jacob is actually contributing to it currently. Um, so mm -hmm. what it is, is we're looking for authors to write content. Um, so down below you see the sanity.io slash guest dash authorship. And there you will find the apply button. And if you'd like to write content that will show up in the Sanity community, it is up there and we would love to chat. Awesome. Well, again, thank you everyone for showing up. We'll see you in the after show. And Jacob, we'll see you in the community, both on Slack and at sanity.io slash community. Thanks a lot, y'all. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. Bye.